Hello and welcome to MIP TV, the TV station for Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. And I have with me tonight Bob Cook, the founder of MIP, and he's going to be talking about co-creative transactional analysis, a book written in 2014 by Keith Tudor and Graham Sumner. Um, Summers. Summers, excuse me, Graham Summers. And we're going to put a picture of that up now. So you can have a look at it and um, we're going to put a link in the bar below. So if you're interested in the book, you can click on the link and uh, go and investigate it, maybe buy it. And just to be clear, this isn't a sponsored video. This is just Bob sharing his love of um, of this particular book. Would I be right in saying that, Bob? Yeah, my love of transaction analysis, how transaction analysis has evolved since... Uh, Eric Burns Day, Eric Burns, yeah. started to create TA in 1956. His first books were on intuition. And this book really is an evolution of transactional analysis. Um, it's one of the uh, books which has taken really transactional analysis in the 21st century. Um, it's a wonderful book. I, I really like it. It um, concentrates on the thread of relational transactional analysis. Mm. In other words, it looks at the co-created relationship between two people, therapist, client, and if you concentrate on the relationship, then you will work towards an effective cure. The relationship is the key, in other words, to um, cure in this sense. So it, it almost sounds like there's an acknowledgement that um, the relationship is a primary part of the of of the model or the theory or the treatment plan and this book really concentrates on that element and of course keith tudor's well known he he, he he's come up quite a few times certainly mm. in my teachings through the years but he's he's he's, he's been a voice in the person-centered community so okay. i'm wondering if I, I get that sense that he's transferred that into ta would that be right yeah i think so um it's certainly centering on uh, the, the idea of the relationship mm. uh, as all important. And if you go back to Eric Burns' time um, and his first books, Transactional Analysis and Psychotherapy, which I reviewed here, I think it was the first book I yeah, yeah. reviewed. Yeah. This is the fifth book. Yes. Um, now if you look at Eric Burns' books, so Transactional Analysis and Psychotherapy, 1961, and then you look at Games People Play in 1964, and you look at, uh, you know, uh, the theory of group principles in 1967, and then what you say after you say hello in 1969. Um, he didn't really, Eric Byrne didn't really centre on the relationship who's been figure in the idea of psychotherapy. He, he, he developed a lot of techniques, a lot of uh, really good models, like the parent-adult-child model, functional, structural. Mm. Talked about good, you know, games, drama, triangle, strokes, discounts, transactions, but he didn't really ever figure. Well, he didn't really, I think, concentrate on the relationship between a the therapist and client, uh, which is a co-created process, being figure to cure. Really, when you talk about co-creative, I've I've often heard you speak of this before, and it might be worth just expanding on on that co-creative it almost feels like there's there's two people in the relationship and they create it between them would that be Correct. right Correct. yes so here i am talking to you roy so if i suddenly said to you do you know what roy i've had flu for the last three days which is true by the way i'm suffering right. from flu at the moment <laughs> the, that transaction would impart information to you and would probably evoke in you uh, a tran you know, a transaction back. Now that might be coming from in TA terms, parent, adult, child, but we would co-create co a dialogue. Mm. We co-create the space between us. Yes. Okay. So, so, so if you, look, if so, you just follow that for a moment. Yeah. Look at the theory that the past affects the present. Yeah, and that we are enacting in the present. Our past dramas. Yeah, you with me? Yeah, yeah. I'm following uh, with the you, Bob, hope yeah. that we'll get a different outcome. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know um, 
you know, what your history is about illness, but say you were, you know, you have a script belief that uh, you should get on in life, be strong, mm. don't look at illnesses, and that you, you know, you've got to really just uh, ignore illnesses. Mm. Um, you know, and you will have a script decision about that. So your transaction back to me might not come from the child eager state. It might come from the parent eager state. Yes, I might say, well, you know, yeah, okay, I hear that you've had a bit of flu, Bob, but, you know, pull yourself together, book yourself up. You're not yeah. dead. You're not dead yet, that type of thing. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you're, so you're enacting out a script belief or a mm. uh, real core belief from your history and so in the co-created relationship with me and you, yeah, um, what, what, the way I transact has an impact on you, mm -hmm. and then you transact back in the co-created relationship between the two of us. And we may or may not enact out the, uh, your script from your history. Yeah, so it sounds to me like the way, the way someone reacts to that initial um, I've had flu, which is, is, is an adult, transaction yeah. Yeah. It, the response of that could either come from a, a very parental place which i've just right. done or a very childish place is like oh that's terribly frightening and oh i bet you're feeling awful and you need four days off work and oh that right. type of thing <laughs> uh, so we're playing out in the here and now mm. or we're enacting out in our co-creative relationship processes from the past yes Yes. So that's really what, what we mean by co-created relationship. But what happens in the therapist room with the client is a relationship today in 2017, which which will have its etiology or its origins way back in time. Yes. So if we can deal with the relationship in the here and now, perhaps maybe in a different way or have a different outcome, we may then, in that process, have some healing through the new relationship. Yes. So a reaction such as I'm I'm sorry to hear that you've not been feeling well. I wonder I wonder what you're doing about it. That type yes. of thing would be a very much of an adult response, wouldn't it? Yeah, and then, then how I react back to that might be one of um you know uh, disbelief that yes. somebody could actually say you know, this um, transaction in a certain way. Or, or it may be typical to my history, according to, you know, my script belief systems. So it's through the relationship with therapist and client that we can have a different healing in the present. Yeah. And what also I'm hearing, and it sounds really interesting, Bob, from someone who comes from a personal centered position, <laughs> is that the, the reaction to what someone says can set the tone of the relationship and the power in the relationship. So if, if you had a client who said, I've had flu, and you say, oh, you'll sort of, you'll, you'll be all right. You take a few pills or, <laughs> you know, go around yes. the block or whatever. It sets the tone, doesn't it? And the, and the direction of the relationship. And that, that can be, I would imagine that could be quite dangerous if, if it's done without any thought or, or kind of oh. sense of oh. self from the therapist. Right, right. Now, now here, you're hitting on a really big point here because I think when we talk about using the relationship in a co-created way, we need to have some clinical thinking. Mm. It isn't just about past timing or self-directing a relationship in a way which may be a one-up, one-down position. This is about clinical thought in the relationship. Mm. Another way of looking at this is that the clinician is reworking the transfers in the here and now in the service of the client. Mm. So they're re in the service of the client. Yeah, so they're reworking. They're being thoughtful of their own history of this. Um, mm. Their response is, is is purely based on the 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 best outcome for the clients and, and doing Correct. the right thing for the clients. Yeah, in the service of the clients. Correct. Mm. And you know, it takes quite a lot of skill mm. to work in this relational co-creative uh, process. It, it, it takes a lot of, you know, higher sophistication, and most important, it takes the therapist knowing their, knowing themselves well. Oh, yes, yes, the yes. So this is about self awareness, isn't self -awareness. it, Bob? 
Yeah, because if you don't know yourself well in this particular model, um, you won't know where you begin and where the client ends or where the client ends and you begin. And you could end up in a symbiosis emerging and actually uh, a counterproductive um, process. Yes, you, you get into a symbiotic relationship, couldn't you, where, where there could be either codependency either way, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it takes, um, you know, it takes a real lot of therapy, knowing yourself, uh, for you to work well in this process. I think mm. um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful book, by the way, because it goes through the origins of Eric Byrne, goes through the um, the concepts that Eric Byrne brings forward, and brings TA right up to date. Um, you know, in terms of relational. Um, thinking, a relational theory, therapy um, uh, in, in, in the 21st century. Yes, it's, so I mean the, the very date of the book, 2014, it's maybe two, three years old. It's, it's got two quite big voices in the world of counselling and psychotherapy. So it, it sounds to me, I've not read the book myself, but from what you've said and, and the chats we've had about it in, in the past, it seemed, it seemed to me that this is bringing the thinking up to date, maybe adding on to the work of Burns, who was a technician. Yeah, yes, but, definitely. Yeah. It, and it would really appeal, I think, to client-centred therapists. Oh, that's interesting. What, what, what brings you to that place, Bob? Because it's actually, it's about, um, it's about following the, um, the client mm. uh, in, a, in a congruent way. It's about being attuned. It's not about going back in someone's history in a regressive way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it's, it's going with the client in the here and now. Mm. Not about using techniques, not using about uh, analysis. It's about bringing, you know, bringing the work into a phenomenological place. Yes. In the actual clinical office, mm. which is where I think client-centered work has its, has its uh, origins, really. Yeah, so I think that's where it has its efficacy as well. That's that's where the model would say the work's done. But in in TA, yeah. of course, you know it relies on the on the technique, on the model, um, of the mechanics of it. So yeah, I hear what you're saying, Bobby. A useful book for maybe maybe person sensor therapists who want to read about it from maybe a slightly different angle than the traditional person sensor books. That last sentence is really interesting because what you just said that about TA, the mechanics, uh, models, etc. If you go back to Eric Burns' day in classical transaction analysis, 1961 to 1971, that is certainly true, mm. what you said. However, this book is focusing very much on the relationship between therapist and client and reworking the transfers in the service of the client, not, not necessarily um, bringing techniques in, like I said, yes. drama, track, <coughs> discounting matrix, mm. this, uh, the dis script theory, or what you know, those techniques you just talked about there. Mm. This is much more about the co creative relationship between the therapist and the client being the way to healing, not the techniques. Right. So the emphasis is really is on the relationship. Yes, not, really. not the analysis of the relationship, right. not the, the relationship. analysis of the relationship but the co-created relationship that occurs in the, the client's room. I mean, it's a, uh, sorry, the therapist's room. And that's a really important point. This is solely to do with the relationship and the co-creation between the two people, the therapist and the client, being the road to healing, not techniques, oh. not theory, yes. but what happens in yeah. the room. So it sounds to me this book is a book for clinicians, for yes. students, it sounds yes. to me like, to some extent, it's mod modality free because it focuses on the on the relationship and how yes. to build a relationship. That's really right, Roy. And I, I just want to take that step further. Which says it isn't theory free in the terms of the co-creative transactional analyst. We'll have that whole parent, adult, child model those theories of Eric Byrne, the evolution of transaction analysis through redecision therapy, through shift and 
approach, integrative approaches, they're there. They're, I'm not saying that heritage isn't there, mm. but what I am saying is that the primary focus is in the co-created relationship, not the theory. Yes. Yes, it's building the relational depth, isn't it? And building that trusting connection. Wonderful world. Wonderful world. And who wrote that book, Relational Depth and Client-Centred World? <laughs> well, that, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot now. Yes, yeah, that, no, would, that, would be Mick, that would be Mick Cooper, wouldn't it? And Dave Mearns, yeah. yes. No, I love the term, yes. Relational Depth. But this, this book is concentrating on the relationship, not the theory. It doesn't mean that the therapist hasn't got the theoretical heritage. But what is important is the co-created relationship above the theory yes yes i think that's a really important point well i think that's a great Which point i think that's I really like yeah i think that's a I, my passion yes it's, it, it's, it's, it is it is it is your passion yeah. bob and anybody who's seen you teach would would know that so so to end this review um if anyone's interested the book is called um co-creational ta 2014 keith tudor and graham summers and uh, is a book that, as Bob Cook said, would suit students of transactional analysis, but students of counselling in, in general. Maybe worth taking a peek at it from a different perspective and, and just seeing what relational psychotherapy means and relational depth means in another modality. So, Bob Thank Cook, you. as always, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roy.